And in terms of recording, uh, do you, like, is it automatically recorded? Uh, yep. So it's actually recording now. Oh, great. <laughs> as soon as you hit the great. start okay. webinar button, it records. Yep. So I just asked a really redundant question. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. No worries. It's fine. Have you been attending other sessions? Uh, no, we haven't. Uh, we're um, we're both in university, so uh, it's exam uh, season right now, and I think we're pretty, pretty. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I I get that. Well, we appreciate you doing this talk during exam season, especially. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's a it's a um, it's a good conference, right? I think I've done it a couple times in the past, so you know it's it's uh, this is Max's first time, so um, yeah, we're just. Uh, Looking forward, I guess, to um, yeah, to how this goes. Yeah, we're actually doing an in-person event in Atlanta um, in October, so okay. it'll be the first in-person event since COVID mm -hmm. for us. So hopefully, oh, we'll get to cool. in person. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure, that'd be cool. I wonder, Max, do you think it would echo if your mic was? If your mic was on, but your sound was off, I don't know if that would echo. Okay, what it would do. now that it's in like the ears, right? I can hear myself. Oh, I could hear and, you perfectly. Uh, okay, yeah. great. Yeah, it just might be, just might be trippy on your end because okay. you'll hear yourself talking. But yeah, that's fine. There's a, like a half second uh, latency as well. <laughs> that's that's fine. fine. I hear a very small echo from. You, Ben. Uh, Hearing an echo? Okay. I will. I will. Are you able to move further back? Yeah, I can try. Well, I yeah, can just talk quietly. Either way. It's my end that's causing the oh, issue. I see. And I have a loud voice. Yeah. Okay, let me see how far I can get. Okay, I mean, this is good. I can hear everything from my end. Including okay. me slapping my laptop on the on the desk. And I think, am I still echoing? I don't think so. There's a little very very. Oh, because you know why? Because the design of like of the lecture hall. So if you're uh, talking from there, everyone in the room can hear you because of that. That's why right. I'm sitting at the front of a lecture hall, so that's probably all it is. I'll move over here maybe, and then we can do it better here. Cool. Sorry, we're just getting. This will be funny for anyone in the recording because we're. <laughs> yeah, we are in the same place. Yeah. But we're not supposed to be because it's online. <laughs> cool. Am I still echoing? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'll just uh, mute myself. Maybe just, just mute yourself when I'm talking, and then yes. you can unmute. I can. I can do yeah. the shuffle. Sounds good. Cool. Sorry about that. Ah, no worries. <laughs> Which will work, sorry. Yeah, that's fine. That'll be weird, but it'll work. <laughs> yeah. I don't... I honestly don't think anyone would notice, to be honest with you. I'm going to go back to the ear because it's nicer. I don't think anyone would actually, you know, realize that. I wouldn't. I was in a Zoom call and someone else was talking. People Perfect. should start joining very soon. Perfect. Sounds good. I'm just going to mute myself and have fun, guys. Thanks. Take care of them all. Yeah, so we got eight people, nine people. <laughs> True. Hi, everyone. Just as you're getting joining in here, um, looks like we have about seven attendees here. Perfect. Uh, we'll just wait uh, for a few more minutes here, maybe, um, just for some more people to show up. And then we can uh, get started. Uh, while we're waiting, um, 
participants, feel free to uh, go in the chat box and uh, let us know like what your background is. Um, so maybe like, you know, where do you use data science or like what's your sort of level in data science? Um, you know, are you a beginner or are you, you know, in industry? Um, as well as uh, what language you tend to use. I'm assuming it's going to be a lot of Python, but that's okay. Um, and then uh, also uh, let us know if you ever heard of APL before. Um, sort of what got you interested in attending this workshop. Yeah, I'm more in academia as well. Um, I think Max, you're sort of, you're in academia looking to move to industry, yeah? Okay, uh, let's get started. Um, I assume most people probably don't have knowledge of APL. Max is going to, uh, is, we're in the same room. So um, if you've seen me looking over here or if you see Max looking over at me, uh, we're in the same room. So it's kind of, uh, you know, a little bit, a uh, little interesting. Um, so yeah, uh, we, um, yeah, maybe I'll uh, do a quick introduction to uh, us. Max is gonna be monitoring the chat for the first uh, half and then I'll monitor the chat for the second half um, while he presents. Um, all right, so uh, I'm Ben, um, or Benjamin Fedoric, um, and Max is over there. Um, he is, uh, well, maybe I'll let you do an introduction in a second, but uh, um, I, I'll give a bit about myself. Um, so I am uh, an undergraduate student at Ontario Tech University, um, studying uh, applied and industrial mathematics. Uh, got interest in number theory and algebra, which probably doesn't mean a lot to data scientists, but that's okay. Um, I'm sure many data scientists will appreciate, uh, you know, RSA encryption and, and all these technologies that uh, number theory has sort of provided. Um, so yeah, that's a bit about me. Um, I am a full member as well as uh, the founding president of an organization called Northern Shores Innovation Institute or NSCI. Uh, we're based out of Toronto, um, Ontario. Maybe I should have led with that. Uh, Max and I both live in Oshawa, Ontario, which is uh, just a short distance uh, outside of Toronto. Um, I created uh, an organization called Northern Shores Innovation Institute, essentially to provide young people with opportunities uh, to conduct research as well as to take on development projects um, where essentially it might not be very easy for young people to get access to some of these opportunities. So um, we're trying to bring opportunities to young people uh, in that way. Um, I'll hand it off to Max. I'll just mute myself, Max, and then you can do your uh, introduction. Sounds good. So yeah, I'm Max. Uh, I'm also a student at uh, Ontario Tech U. I'm in my final semester. And uh, I'm work right now. I'm working part time as a junior APL developer at a financial company called uh, BCA Research. Uh, it's a it's a small company under the umbrella of an international uh, company. But uh, uh, BCA Research itself is uh, based in Montreal. And uh, yeah, I use a, a, a dialog APL at there. I, I solve uh, problems with it as a general purpose programming language. And uh, in, outside of work and uh, more in academia, I'm interested in functional programming and the type theory. And I actually have a uh, NixOS uh, running on my other machine, which is a uh, operating system based around the idea of a, program, a functional programming. Awesome. Thank you. Um, if you just want to mute just so I don't get echoed again. <laughs> um, cool. Okay. Uh, and Max is also a probationary member at NSI, so he's recently joined us and uh, looking forward to doing more work with him. Uh, so let's talk a bit about uh, APL. So APL is, um, uh, let me give you a bit of an introduction here. Uh, so APL, um, it uh, stands for, it's a very creative name, stands for uh, A Programming Language. Um, APL is basically, it, it's a different paradigm from what you're typically used to. So I think most people are used to um, object-oriented, uh, maybe some other different types of, uh, of programming languages. Maybe some people are, are uh, sort of familiar with, um, uh, say, like functional programming. Um, APL is a different paradigm. So it's array-oriented programming. Um, it's one of the, 
I, I, it's not the original language, but it's one of the original programming languages. Um, it was invented in the 60s, uh, mostly as a tool for thought, um, sort of a, a, a concise notation for thought. Um, so how do we like write, say, mathematical thoughts or, or uh, um, things along those lines? Uh, it was very, very sort of pure and abstracted, um, which is sort of in, in one way why it's, why it's quite an interesting language. Uh, uh, it wasn't really started as a computer programming language per se. It was more started as a, um, I suppose, as a, uh, as a, just as a notation for thought, almost a mathematical notation. And since then, that notation has been evolved um, into a programming language that uh, we can use for um, data science, visualization, um, so on. Uh, it's really well known for having a concise syntax. Now, sometimes uh, people find that syntax a little bit jarring. Um, so you'll probably feel that initially as well, um, but that's okay. Uh, you don't have to worry too much about that. Just take it a step at a time and really try to understand what's, uh, what's going on. Um, and if you have any questions, like I say, please leave it in the chat box and we can, uh, we can take care of uh, answering it for you. Um, all right, cool. Uh, yeah, so it's got a very terse syntax. So it's very compact and very um, almost hard to read, some might say, until you get used to it, right? So a lot of people say it's a very hard to read language. Um, I would argue against that. Um, because every language is hard to read, right? Like if you, if you've never seen say Java code before and you open up a Java file, um, or like C file, right? Like any of these, these, these languages, um, they're difficult to read too. Like no one can really read them unless you really have some experience with it. Right. So as you gain experience with APL, um, you will, you'll come to appreciate the syntax and, and probably be able to, uh, um, be able to understand it and, and read it uh, just as you would any other language. So um, let's start off, uh, actually, before I move on to that slide, I'd like to, I'm probably going to be flipping around here between a couple screens. Um, can you see my window, Max? Are you able to see my window uh, on tri -ABL? I don't know if my screen share is switched over. Cool. Perfect. Okay. So, um, so I've got this, uh, this website here. This is um, a website uh, that is run by um, Dialog APL, uh, which is sort of one, I suppose, flavor of APL. Um, if you want, uh, this is probably the easiest way to interact with APL uh, without doing downloads. Um, I know a lot of people might not be interested in downloading another program to their computer, right? So. Um, or going through any of that process. So we, uh, they, they have this website. Um, if you go on your browser to tryapl.org, uh, you just type that into your browser, you'll get to this uh, website. Uh, it's a fairly useful website. Uh, you can run APL right within your browser. So um, it's very handy, uh, especially for sort of quicker um, uh, queries in APL. So just quickly, uh, we can talk about a little bit about how APL works. So um, APL is array based, which means essentially everything is some type of an array. So you'll see here, um, maybe we'll, maybe let's get started with just a simple operation. So for example, if we do like uh, four minus two, you can just do four dash two, and it'll tell you that's two. Um, so it can do basic math like that, right? So it can do say uh, three plus six, and it'll give me nine. Um, now you'll notice that there's a bunch of these characters across the top uh, panel here in Try APL. I'd suggest that you follow along with this because uh, it's very useful. Um, so we have a bunch of these different operators and each operator, um, if you hover over it, it'll tell you exactly what that operator does, um, which is quite useful. Now you'll notice we have special symbols for times and division. I, I would assume most programmers would be used to um, using, say, the slash symbol for division. So if I wanted to do, let's say, like six divided by two, uh, that would be how most programmers would do it. Um, I don't even know if it would. Yeah, it's, it's going to give us some weird output in APL, which is not expected. Uh, we want to do six divided by three. So to do division, uh, you can either go up here to the top panel and just click the division button. Uh, or if you want to, you can do, um, if you hover over any of these icons, it'll give you a little tooltip almost. Uh, you'll notice it says um, prefix and then equals. So if you notice prefix is prefix equals. 
Uh, so by default on uh, try EPL, the prefix symbol is um, that little back tick uh, symbol. So it's the one that's right above your tab beside the number one key um, on, on, I think, a standard keyboard. That's where it's supposed to be. Uh, if you hit that key, that is your prefix key. So if you hit, uh, so if you type six, you hit that back tick key, you'll notice that the top bar goes a little bit, a different shade of purple. Then if you type equals, that's a shortcut for entering that, uh, division, that division symbol. So you don't actually have to go all the way up there every time. You can just type back tick equals, and that's your division symbol. So if we do six divided by two, we get three. Same thing for multiplication. We don't use the star symbol for multiplication. We use the actual time symbol. Uh, so that's back tick minus, um, and that's your times. So six times seven, 42. Um, perfect. So one thing that I'd like to mention is you'll notice there's a bunch of these different symbols and each symbol uh, has two different, um, what we call, you can think of them as like modes, um, but, but they're called adicities in, uh, in APL. Um, autocorrect always wants to type it, type it as acidity, but it's like acidity but with the D and the C uh, swap. So it's adicity. Um, so each symbol has two different adicities. Uh, one of them, which we've been using here is, is dyadic. So dyadic means that, uh, you have an operator. So say in this case, the minus sign is our operator. Uh, and it takes two, um, two inputs, one on either side of the operator. So in this case, the two inputs are four and two. Uh, we did another dyadic operation here, which was uh, six divided by two, let's say. The operator was division, and it took two um, arguments, which were six and two on either side of the, of the sign. Uh, there's a second adicity, um, which, so, so that I should maybe say this, these are called dyadic, right? So two um, sort of dyadic. Uh, there's also, um, an adicity where the operator only takes in one value. Um, and that's called monadic. So like mono monadic, right? Um, and so that's the second type of adicity, um, that, that we have in APL. Uh, and so what that does is you put the, the operator and you put the input immediately after it. Um, so let's take a, an example of the division symbol. So we can do division um, and then five, let's say. Um, and what that'll do, so this is, this is the monadic version of uh, the division operator. Uh, what that is, is it's the reciprocal operator. So each symbol has two different adicities, right? Division, if you use it in dyadic, it divides the two numbers. And if you use it in monadic, it does the reciprocal of the number. So one over the number. We run that, it gives me 0.2. Uh, so each operator, if you hover over it, so see if I hover over uh, the division symbol, um, it shows reciprocal and divide. So one of them is monadic, the next one's uh, dyadic. Um, and each operator has the same sort of uh, idea, right? So um, one that you might, uh, let's see, one that you might know. So uh, this, this, uh, this little symbol here looks like an um, like upside down L almost. Um, that's the ceiling operator. Uh, or the max operator. So um, it can sort of be used as either. So to type that operator, what we do is we hit, if you hover over there, we hit prefix, so the, the tilde key and then S. So tilde S. Uh, if I give it two things, it will return the maximum of the two. So in this case, it returns four. If I do like five and then max two, it'll give me five. So it's just going to return the maximum of the two arguments that you pass it. Um, alternatively, uh, you can use it in the monadic form. And what that will do, uh, as programmers will probably be familiar with, if you pass it a decimal number, it will um, take the ceiling of it. So it'll bring it up to the next positive integer. So in this case, we have uh, uh, 2.5, ceiling of that is three. You also have other operators like floor, um, the uh, sort of magnitude or residue operator. We'll get into more of these uh, different operators uh, on a future slide. Um, one other thing that I do want to mention is you can do array computations because everything, like I said, every argument that you pass in APL is an array. Um, so you might be thinking, you know, what, that doesn't make sense. Well, this four and this two that we passed are arrays, right? They're just, you know, one dimensional singleton arrays essentially, right? Um, and so they're, they're not very, uh, um, they're not particularly, uh, uh, interesting arrays, let's say, but, but they are arrays. 
Um, so you can do anything in APL with arrays. Uh, so for an example, uh, maybe we do one, two, three, plus four, five, six, and that'll give us five, seven, nine. So it does one plus four, and that's five. Two plus five is seven. Three plus six is nine. So it goes sort of element wise um, through that, uh, through that, uh, yeah, through that uh, uh, array. Uh, you can have multiple sizes of arrays. Um, yeah, there's there's a bunch of different things we can sort of uh, we can do with uh, with arrays in APL. So everything, like I said, everything is an array. Um, every input, every output, it's all arrays. Uh, now you'll notice maybe uh, I'm sure you figured this out. You can type uh, your commands directly into this window here, um, or alternatively, you can write it down here at the at the bottom, and it does the same thing. Um, either way is fine. All right, I'm going to go back to the slides here. Let me just go back here and hit uh, slideshow. Let's see. Okay, cool. All right, so um, back to the slides. Uh, we talked about adicities. So uh, like I said, um, a monadic case uh, takes in one um, argument and the dyadic case takes in two arguments. Uh, so here are the dyadic operator. So um, I put each symbol down um, and below each symbol, I put what it does. So let's sort of talk through uh, some of them at least. Um, I don't, don't want to run out of time, so I'm not going to spend too much time. But if you'd like a copy of these slides, please feel free to uh, um, send me a message. Uh, we'll have contact information at the end, uh, so please feel free to reach out. Um, so we've already dealt with addition, subtraction, multiply, divide. Um, power is the star symbol. So uh, you know, in most programming languages, uh, the star symbol is used for multiplication. In APL, the star symbol is is ex is like exponentiation, right? So it's uh, um, so if you did like say two star three, that would be two to the power of three, which is eight. Um, there's this fancy star in a circle symbol, and we use that for logarithm. Uh, so you feed it um, the base and you feed it uh, the um, number that you want to take the log of, and it will output the logarithm. Um, the deal symbol. So the deal symbol is sort of like, uh, say you wanted to deal out um, a bunch of cards. Uh, so if you had, say, um, you, you, it's a dyadic operator, so it takes in two inputs. Uh, and I, I'd encourage you to sort of play around with it. Um, throughout this presentation, please feel free to play around with anything. That's, uh, that's really the best way that you can learn. Um, so really what deal does is it's almost, you can think of it like dealing out a number of cards. So you deal how many different types of cards you have, you pass it, and you deal it, or you tell it how many cards you want to deal out. Um, and so it'll sort of randomly generate, uh, it's sort of like a random generation in a sense. Um, binomial, uh, so that's sort of like the, uh, um, I think in, in spoken English, we tend to say like choose, uh, so, or like um, combinations, right? Um, you, so for example, if you did like, uh, if you wanted to, to, in APL, if you wanted to do say um, five choose two, you would do five and then the, exclamation point and then two um maximum we spoke we talked about already so you give it two inputs and it returns the max of the two minimum is quite similar uh, just returns the minimum of the two uh residue is interesting so residue is like the mod operator so in many programming languages you have uh the percent sign maybe for mod or maybe you actually have to type out the word like mod uh, for like a, a, a modulus um Residue is, is that the equivalent of that operator in uh, APL. Now you'll see we have these two tacks here and they may seem kind of pointless when I describe them, um, but they become interesting uh, later on. So um, these two symbols here are called left tack and right tack. Um, so the, the left tack, uh, what it does is it's a dyadic operator. It takes two inputs and it outputs always the thing on the left. So whatever you put on the left, it will always output that. Um, it's sort of like an identity, if you want to think of it like that, but it's specifically the left. So whatever you put on the left, it will always output that, no matter what. Um, and the right is the same thing. So whatever you put on the right, it will always output that. I, I encourage you to give it a try. Um, the equal sign, pretty straightforward. Uh, it returns a Boolean. Um, if two things are equal, it returns one. If they're not equal, it returns zero. 
Uh, not equal, again, very straightforward. Um, I'm just going to sort of skim through these ones. Uh, it returns a Boolean, zero or one. But again, it's really an array, right? So it's a, it's an array that contains a zero or a one, um, like a singleton array. Uh, then we have the less than, greater than, less and greater symbols. Um, sorry, less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, less than, greater than symbols. Um, so those symbols, uh, again, fairly straightforward. I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. Uh, circular is interesting. Circular allows you to do um, trigonometric functions. We're not going to get too far into that, um, but it allows you to uh, do you know, sine, cosine, tangent, um, and inverse trig. It lets you do all of that. Uh, so it's quite a useful um, operator. Uh, without um, is sort of like a uh, remove symbol. Um, so yeah, uh, that's uh, what the without symbol does. It's just a little tilde. Um, this uh, up hat, I guess, if you want to call it that, uh, is um, the and symbol. So if you're doing logic, it's the and symbol. Or if you're doing uh, just general numbers, uh, it's the least common multiple. Um, so you can calculate the least common multiple of a set of numbers using that uh, that symbol. And then in terms of uh, the next one there, it's sort of the opposite of that. So it does or, uh, or it does the greatest common divisor. Um, then these two uh, symbols that follow it uh, looks like a, um, like those same symbols, the, the hats or the, the V uh, with a little tilde through it, a little uh, squiggle through it. Um, those are the NAND and the NOR operators. I think on tri apl they move that little tilde up to the, above the symbol, I believe. Um, so just so you're aware, it might not appear exactly the same. Uh, and then union and intersection, uh, if you're familiar with, say, you know, some, some basic uh, discrete mathematics or, or set theory, um, it's the same thing applies here. So the union is you just take all of the elements from both sets and sort of combine them into one larger set. Um, and then the intersection takes the common elements between the sets. Um, you can sort of think of that like a Venn diagram. Um, and then finally, catenates. Catenates uh, does concatenation, right? Um, so if you have, say, two lists and you, you catenate them together, it creates one longer list. And then I will move on to monadic operators. Um, very similar. So these are the monadic cases. Uh, plus, we'll do the complex conjugate of a uh, value. Uh, so uh, in APL, um, I'll show you how to type complex numbers. Uh, it's not too difficult. So plus is the conjugate. Um, the minus sign is negation. Uh, the time sign gives you the sort of the, a unit vector um, or a direction. Uh, we talked about division does reciprocal. Star does the uh, exponentiation operator. So like e to the power of x. Um, and then the star with the circle is natural log. Uh, the question mark. Uh, in monadic is used as a roll. So it's sort of like you're rolling an n-sided dice, what value comes up. Uh, factorial um, is pretty straightforward. Ceiling and floor, we talked about that. Uh, absolute value, so if you use uh, that vertical bar in the monadic case, it's an absolute value. Um, either way, these, these left tacks and the right tacks, uh, they both sort of mean the same thing, which is just same. So it's just, uh, just an identity. Whatever you feed it in, it outputs out. Um, now we're getting into some other symbols that I don't know that we've covered, uh, or maybe I'll maybe I'll jump ahead a little bit to some of the ones we have covered. So we have this comma. Uh, in this case, uh, it's Brabble. Um, I'm not going to get too far into that, um, but you can uh, play around with it. Uh, the circular operator uh, is pi times. So if you want to do like pi times a value, um, so like two pi would be circle two. Um, that would be two pi. Uh, not is the, the squiggle operator. So again, for logic, uh, it would just change all zeros to ones and ones to zeros. Um, the U symbol is union. Um, I don't know if I changed that from dyadic case. I don't think I did. Um, I must not have changed that from the dyadic case either way. Um, so this iota symbol, let's talk about that. So this iota symbol you see here, it sort of looks like an I. It's the Greek letter iota. Um, this is uh, indices. So um, it is uh, the, it gives you the, uh, the index um, of, uh, it, it gives you like a, um, almost like a range you might want to think. Like in Python, you use the range command. 
uh, in um, APL, you use this IOTA operator. And I'll uh, show you how that works. Uh, depth is um, these three, three ticks. Uh, so this sort of gives you like almost like the shape of an array or like the dimensionality of an array. That's probably a better word, the dimensionality. Uh, this row character gives you like the shape, so the dimensions of the um, of the array. So maybe the the three three bars there, the depth operator, that might tell you like, is it like a two dimensional array or a three dimensional array? Whereas this row character um, is is going to tell you what the shape. So maybe it's a two by two or a three by three by six or whatever, right? Um, tally operator, uh, you'll see it looks like the three bars with the the slash through it. Uh, that is sort of like a count or a length uh, operator. Uh, we have this symbol here, which looks like a box with two dots in it, or like a division symbol with a box around it. I don't know how you want to look at it. Uh, that symbol means uh, matrix inversion. So if you give it a matrix, it will do matrix, uh, like the inverse of that matrix. Um, and I think that's everything I wanted to cover with uh, these, um, yeah, with these uh, symbols. Uh, so again, if there's any questions about any of this, please throw it into the chat box. Um, we're more than happy to uh, to do some examples of that. So um, quickly here, I'm just going to go over. I want to show you the IOTA operator because I think that's uh, going to be very useful. So just on try APL here, if you type IOTA, say you type IOTA 5, um, APL is indexed starting at 1 uh, by default. So it'll give you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Say that you're... Uh, a true programmer and you want to do um, index starting at uh, at zero, uh, you could do minus one plus iota five, right? So you're, did I do that right? Uh, sorry, uh, it should be this. So if you want to do like a negative of a number, you should put this upper, this like upper um, minus sign, which is uh, this symbol here. It's uh, your prefix and then two. So that will give you like negative one plus iota five. Iota is uh, quite fittingly, it's the tick and then i. If you do that, then it's indexed starting at zero. Um, awesome. Uh, I think that's all I really wanted to cover on that. Um, so yeah, you can, you can get a range of numbers like that. Uh, let's um, go back to the slides real quick. So I'll go over here. So I'm going to show you another uh, interesting um, operator here. It's called the replicate operator. So this is what the slash is used for in uh, API. Um, the replicate operator is quite interesting. So what it does is it it takes two m or it takes two arguments. Uh, the right side is like some sort of array, whether it's like a single element or whether it's a list is usually what you're going to see, some sort of list. Um, and on the left side. Uh, you pass it an operator. So it's an operator that takes another operator in, an, another symbol in. Um, so in this case, what I have here is I have this, uh, this um, uh, max maximum symbol. Uh, and I'm doing maximum replicates, and then I've passed the list. So what this replicate symbol does is it's, it's essentially the equivalent of sticking that maximum symbol in between each element of that list. Um, so you can sort of logic through what this would do. Uh, if it's trying to find the maximum, say, between uh, 3 and 4 and 6 and 4 and 3 and 1, it's going to find the max of all of those elements, right? Um, another useful one you might see is, is uh, plus slash. So that one is going to put a plus sign between each element in a list. So it's summing up everything, right? That's the equivalent of like a sum. Uh, this is what makes it uh, APL really powerful is that you have all these different operators that you can combine in unique ways. Um, so, you know, you have a very limited set of operators, uh, although not really, you have quite a decent set of operators, um, but that's all you have, right? And, and from that, you can create very interesting uh, functionality in very short, um, very short lines, essentially, or very short effort. Okay, let me move on. Uh, so I have some exercises. Uh, I'd be interested to see if you uh, have an idea of what this would do in the chat box. If you want to please, uh, preferably without trying on APL, um, see if you can think about what, uh, what these operators would do. One of them is a trick question to see if you're paying attention. 
the other one uh, is pretty straightforward. Feel free to answer in the in the chat box if you have any ideas what uh, what these will um, will evaluate to. Good guess. Uh, so when we're doing the replicate operator, um, it's always going with the dyadic form. So I, I think you you caught on. I was sort of assuming that most people would look at this first one and would say, um, "Oh, well, that's uh, um, so iota five is one, two, three, four, five, right?" Um, so then. If you put the the star symbol between them all, right, then people would think, you know, I was trying to see if you're paying attention. A lot of people would think, oh, the star symbol means times, so it's one times two times three times four times five. Um, that's not the case. It's not. Uh, um, it's not one times two times three times four times five because that star is um, powers. Uh, now I don't expect you to actually know this answer, um, but it's. Uh, uh, it shouldn't be 30. Oh, sorry, the, the bottom one should be 10. Yes, uh, the bottom one should be 10. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll go over the bottom one because it's easier. Uh, you're just adding that plus sign in between every uh, element. So it's 3 plus 2 plus 5, that's 10. Um, now, if you do the time slash, now, what that does is it does exponentiation, right? So it's like, it's going to do um, it's going to do like a, a tower of powers essentially right uh, so yeah so it's quite interesting I was trying to sort of trip you up on that one and uh, uh, you had a good uh, thought there with e to the power of one e to the power of two um, but in uh, with this replicate operator it always defaults to that um, dyadic form right so it always defaults to like the two input form uh, the e to the power of x that's like the monadic form that's the one uh, but good guess there Timothy Getting a domain error for that. Um, maybe I'll let uh, Max take that. Uh, he's uh, he'll help you out in the chat box. Maybe I maybe I type something wrong. I don't know. Um, it's possible. I'm not the best at uh, at. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm very notorious for making typos. Is I guess the best way to say that. Perfect. Max will take a look and he'll get back to you in the chat box. Okay. Cool. Um, order of operations. So APL does not follow bed mass, and this trips people up a lot. Uh, it will always follow brackets. So if you put brackets to tell it what order to do things, it will always follow that. Um, so sort of like as a good way to start writing APL code, you should try using brackets. Um, instead, uh, if you don't put brackets, um, it will always evaluate from right to left. That feels weird. Um, so let's take a look at this example here. Uh, if we do two plus three times five, what do you think that will evaluate to? Put in the chat box what you think that'll evaluate to. 17. Let's give it a try on APL and let's see what happens. So I'm going to go escape. Let me help oh, you uh, do this. There we go. So we said, I think it was two plus three times five. So it does get 17. Exactly. Uh, now this one follows the order of operations, right? So this sort of makes sense. Most people would say, oh yeah, we do three times five first and then we add two. Um, but what if I did this? What if I did five times three plus two? Out of curiosity, before I run that in the chat box, what do you think that will output? 30. So let's see, I'll run it. It's going to do 25. I think that might have just been a, a maybe a quick mental math error there. So no big, no big issues. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no worries. Um, yeah, so first it does 3 plus 2, which is 5, and then it multiplies it by 5. So it always works from right to left. Uh, let's see here. I'll go back to my slides. Perfect. Okay. Uh, selfie operator. Um, kind of a fun name. Uh, selfie swaps the two arguments on either side of an operator. So you'll see here. Um, so for some operators, uh, order that you put the elements in doesn't matter. Um, usually you just sort of use your, your intuition to understand which operators that would be for. So for example, plus, right? Uh, three plus two is the same thing as two plus three. Um, they're they're uh, commutative, right? So you can you can swap them. 
um, without having any issues. Uh, but for division, three divided by four is not the same thing as four divided by three. Um, those are two different answers. So the order does matter in some operators, uh, just sort of using your intuition. Um, uh, you can sort of gather that. Mm. So for example, like I wrote here, three divided by four, we know that's 0 0.75. If you type that into APL, you'll get 0.75. Um, what the selfie operator does is it, it swaps the two operators, or the, sorry, the two arguments that you pass. Um, so if I did it in this case, I do three divide selfie four. What it's doing is it's saying, okay, well, I'm gonna use the division operator, but I'm gonna flip the inputs. Um, so three divides selfie four. What that means is four divided by three. Why would you do this? You might ask, uh, basically because it might save you um, keystrokes. It might save you, it might make sort of more neat code instead of like uh, having to um, pass a bunch of variables a bunch of times. Maybe you use the selfie operator uh, to make your code more visually um, understandable or readable. Uh, it doesn't seem readable right now, but uh, for APL users, it is. Um, so yeah, so this will sort of do the opposite of uh, three divided by four, which is four divided by three. Uh, cool. You can play around with that with different operators if you want. Uh, feel free. All right, let's do an example here. Um, so the example we're gonna do together is if you're given a list of numbers, uh, can you find the mean of that list in APL? Um, and now I have it here written, can you write it as a defund and can you write it point free? We haven't talked about what a defund and what point free is, but we'll do that sort of through this example. Um, so let, let's just sort of consider this first uh, piece here, which is if given a list of numbers, can you find the mean of that list in APL? So just sort of going back to maybe high school or, or uh, um, elementary school, whenever you learned uh, to take means, um, you know, uh, the mean is the sum of all the values in a list divided by the number of, like the length of that list or the number of, uh, of numbers, right? Um, so let's sort of go uh, through an example here. Um, so if we go to try APL, if we have, say we have the list uh, three, five, two, six, four, I don't know, just picking random numbers. Um, let's say that this is the list that we have. Now we can store this as a variable. So we can assign variables in uh, APL. Um, I'm gonna call my variable L for list. Um, so I'm calling it L and then to assign to a variable, uh, you put the variable name first and then you put this symbol called gets. Uh, it looks like a little arrow uh, pointed to the left. I don't know where it is up here. Um, trying to find it up here. Not that it particularly matters. Uh, to do it on your keyboard, what you do is uh, the back tick and then the uh, the open square bracket. So like the, the one right beside your letter P um, and it just produces that arrow. It's probably up in this toolbar. I just, for some reason, can't see it. Oh, it's right at the very beginning there. Um, so that's the, that's the button there that you would use. And so what that does is it assigns a variable. So we've now assigned the, the, that list uh, three, five, two, six, four to the variable L. So if I type L, it outputs three, five, two, six, four. Um, so what I want to happen is I want uh, the average of this list. So I want it to be three plus five plus two plus six plus four. I'm not gonna try and do that because like, uh, like you said there, um, Timothy, I think, uh, was it Timothy? Uh, yeah. Um, you, uh, like you were saying, um, uh, that list, uh, oh, sorry, don't do mental math in public, right? So I'm trying to add that up in my head. I don't want to try and mess it up. Um, maybe I should. Actually, I think that's just 20. If I look at that, uh, that looks like five and five is 10 and 10 is 20. Uh, perfect. So um, I think that's 20. So why don't we test it? So remember earlier, we were talking about the replicate operator. And we said you could take the sum of the values in a list if you do plus slash right? Because it, it takes that plus sign and it puts it between every element. So if we do plus slash L, then that will do the sum of the list of the values in L, right? So maybe I do plus slash L. So I want to take the sum of it. And then I want to divide by 
the number of numbers in L. So maybe let's maybe let's check out what the number of numbers is. So does anyone remember what uh, operator we used for to figure out how like the length of a of a um, of a list? It was a monadic case. If you don't remember, that's okay. Uh, close. Uh, it, it looked like the depth symbol, the three lines, but it had a strike through it, so we called it tally. Um, so it had like a, it almost looked like a knot, uh, like a strike through that triple equal sign thing. Uh, to type that symbol, you do back tick and then uh, shift and the quote symbol. So like you're, you're doing back tick and then like the double quote symbol. Uh, or you can just pick it up here. That's fine too. Um, so that's the tally symbol. This will count the number of elements or the, the length, let's say, of that uh, list. Uh, the length there is five. So we got a length of five. Um, okay, perfect. So that's what we want. So we want to end up getting an average here of four, right? So it should be the sum 20 divided by five should get four. So what I can do here is I could go, well, let's say maybe the length of that list uh, divided by, and then the, um, the tally of that list. So something like this. If I run that, I get four. Cool. Uh, now the question arises, can we get rid of any brackets there? Because maybe it would be easier to read if we got rid of some of the brackets. Or it would be, there, there's, a, there's sort of a thing in APL, which they call golf, uh, which is trying to get the least, um, the least number of characters as you possibly can. Because uh, that's part of the power of APL, right? So does any, is there any brackets I can get rid of here? Remembering that APL moves from right to left. So if we think about it that way, the first thing that APL is going to read regardless is this tally L, right? So I think we can get rid of those brackets and still get the same number because it's always going to evaluate from right to left. So it will evaluate that tally operator first. Okay. Um, now we have a bit of an issue because what happens if I want uh, if I want to give it a different list, right? Or what if I want to pass it a bunch of lists? Like, what if I want this to be sort of more extensible than just you know doing it like in this way for this specific list? It doesn't seem like a smart way to go about doing this. So let's try and create a function. There's two different ways to make a function in APR. The first way is what's called a defund. So maybe let's save this function as mean. Uh, Defun uses these curly brackets. And what it does is it uses two special symbols. Uh, you can use the backtick W, and that's the omega symbol. So it looks like a, looks like a W kind of. It's the letter omega, Greek letter. Um, and it also uses the alpha symbol, which is tick A. Um, now, what, it, what those symbols represent is uh, so you, you could make this function either as monadic or dyadic, whatever you prefer. If it's monadic, then this omega symbol represents whatever you put after the symbol. So it's like the input, right? It's the argument. Uh, it's the parameter that you pass. Uh, if it's dyadic, then that's what both of these mean. So omega is the thing that comes after, because omega is at the end of the Greek alphabet. Um, and alpha is the thing that comes first. Uh, so it's like um, whatever you put on either side of that operator. So those are sort of your, your input uh, parameters or your arguments. So if I wanted to make this mean function, uh, we know that the mean is, um, out of curiosity, does anyone know if the mean is monadic or dyadic? Just based on your intuition. Does it take one input or two? It is monadic, yeah, um, exactly. It takes in one input, which is the list, right? Uh, it doesn't take any other inputs. Um, so it's a monadic function. That means we're only using omega. Uh, so I can type plus slash. And any time that I had L before, I'm just going to replace it with omega, because that's our input, right? Uh, so plus slash omega. And then we'll do divides um, tally omega. So we have this. Uh, this is our defund. So we've just defined this function. Um, if I run it. Uh, it saves that function into this mean. So now this mean is almost like another symbol that we have at our disposal. So I can say the mean of maybe this list and it will output the mean. So it always does it automatically now. So I don't even have to you know, worry about say storing things into variables or, 
or whatever I want to do. If I have like say a CSV file, um, you can just do it automatically. Cool. Um, now I'm going to show you one other way and then I'm going to pass it off to Max. So I'm sorry, I'm taking up your time, Max. Um, I'm going to show you one other way that we could uh, go about um, this, uh, go about this. And it's uh, called do using point free or tacit um, in, in programming, uh, sorry, programming it tacitly. Um, there's a few different ways we can refer to it, but uh, really what this is, is um, it's sort of a more compact notation. So we have this thing in APL called trains. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a good, it's a very uh, notoriously um, difficult concept, uh, but we're going to try and talk about it a little bit. So I'm going to tell you what a three train is. It's also called a fork. Um, if you have three functions and you put them side by side, like F, G, H, so you have three operators and you put them side by side, F, G, and H, then what APL reads this as is it assumes that F is monadic and that H is monadic but that G in the middle is that um, sort of makes sense because the ones on the end are sort of only touching one thing and the one in the middle is touching two things. Um, that might be a way to remember it. Uh, so what it will do is it will take in a monadic on one side, a diatric on the other side, and then, sorry, monadic on either end and then a diatric in the middle. So if you pass, um, let's say that you're, you're passing uh, the function um, or the variable uh, L in this case, right, is, is, our, is our argument that we're passing. If we pass that L into this FGH, where FG and H are just some arbitrary uh, functions, then what it will do is it will read that as F of L, um, and then uh, you'll use G, which is, remember, dyadic, with H of L. So H, F and H are... Um, are monadic, so they only take in the one thing. So you find out what f of l is, then you find out what h of l is, and then you apply g to both what you, both of what you found. Um, we can use that in this case. So we, you'll notice here, we have two uh, inputs. So we have, or sorry, two um, monadic um, functions. So we have plus slash, and we have tally. Both of those are monadic, right? So the plus slash is only taking in one thing, which is omega, and the tally is only taking in one thing, which is again omega. So whenever you see something like that, that's a good indication that you can use a train. So maybe I'll call this mean train or something like that. Um, so I'll call this variable mean train. Uh, and what we'll do is we will store this function. So if you're using uh, implicit um, or, or tacit uh, programming, um, you can just uh, put it in round brackets. And all you have to do is put the symbols, which is kind of interesting. So um, all you have to do here is plus slash and then divides, uh, if I can type it, there we go, divides tally. So these four symbols. So this, this piece here is sort of like our F. This piece here is sort of like our G, oh, sorry, our, our H in that, in that previous example. So I had F, G, H. This and uh, the tally symbol is sort of like our H. And then G is the division symbol, which combines the two things together, the two results together. So it'll take this plus slash, which is the sum of a list, and it'll figure out what the tally of that list is, so how many elements, and then it will divide those two answers. And that's just all a mean is, right? Uh, I don't know why that FGH is there. I'm just going to run this as mean training. Cool. Um, then if I do mean train, this new function I had, of our list L, we expect to get four, and we still get four. Perfect. Um, I'm just going to go back to the slides real quick, and then I'll hand it off to you. Uh, um, I just want to show, uh, this is our example too. I don't really have time to cover it, but uh, I encourage you to, um, to take a look at it. So really, what this example is asking, this exercise is asking for you to do, um, is if you're given some real and non-negative number, uh, so you're just given some number, it's, it's positive and it's a real number, so it might have like decimal points. Um, we want you to try and uh, return a two element uh, vector. So a, a vector that is an, an array that has two elements where one of them is the integer part. So like the whole number part and the other, the other um, 
element in that in that array is the fractional part. So for example, if, if I gave you like the number uh, 3.6, I would want you to return me 3 and 0. 0.6. So sort of separating a number into its fractional, like its, its decimal part and its integer part. Um, that's a good exercise for you to try. This was one of the problems that they listed uh, um, at uh, one of the uh, APL competitions they have. So um, uh, sort of where they showcase uh, APL and, and its, uh, its value. Um, all right, cool. Uh, I'm going to pass it off uh, to Max. Max is going to talk about some data visualization uh, using Jupyter Notebooks. Uh, I'll hand it off to you. Okay. Oh, actually, uh, Ben, do, do you want to cover the star uh, reduce iota 5 uh, situation with uh, Timothy? I, I can cover it too. Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, Timothy, I hope you're watching. Because uh, yeah, I was uh, doing a little investigation on that uh, little expression you you showed me, and uh, it's uh, actually pretty insightful. So, uh, okay, yeah. So there's, uh, uh, oh yeah, let me share my screen. It's uh, up. Okay, cool. So yeah, then you can help me on the chat while I'm uh, talking about. Uh, APL stuff. So the expression, uh, uh, Timothy, yes, Timothy was uh, had been trouble with was uh, star slash iota five. So yeah, it gives you a domain error. So what if I try a lower number? It gives me one. So what's the difference between four and five? So to do that, uh, I think it's uh, easier to explore it in the expanded form. So iota four is a one, two, three, four. So I can I can type that in same thing, and uh, this uh, reduce operator puts whatever's after it, in this case a star, between every uh, uh, element in, in your vector. So I can expand it to this one, two, three, four. Okay. So uh, what's uh, actually happening behind the hood is that the star is uh, raising one to to the power of everything below. It. Yeah, after it. So if I go up to five here, I, I get the same domain error. So uh, let's just look at. Uh, what uh, we are we're raising one to the power of two. So I'll remove the one star and uh, it's a, okay, let me, it's still a huge number. So it gives me a domain error. And uh, if I go up to four, then you can see that uh, it's a uh, two to the, uh, uh, yeah, two, two point something to the, this E124 here means a 10 to, it, that means a one uh, with uh, that many zeros after it. So the E24 is a huge number. So that's why uh, well, when we go up to five, uh, it, uh, it's it gives me, giving me a domain error. But uh, there's a trick around it too. Because of APL's interactive nature, I can, I can run two, three, four, uh, Right now, and I can uh, 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 raise it to the power of five uh, manually, and uh, it gives me a number. It's a really huge. It jumped from 24 e to the 24, 24 zeros to 121 zeros. But I can make use of that number. So I can say one times uh, this uh, huge number to the power of five. And uh, let's see what happens. So it gives me a one. So <laughs> yeah, that's a, a, a long way to get arrive at the same answer, just a one. But it also shows you a, you know, you can, you don't have to, you know, write expressions in APL. You can leverage whatever the uh, session is uh, spitting back to you. 
So yeah, I don't think other languages allow to allow you to interact uh, that well with the ripple. Yeah, you, you cannot you know operate on the outputs and such. Unless uh, there you, you use a little tool called uh, Jupyter. Yeah, and uh, yeah for for Jupyter the, the yeah APL have, have has a really nice uh, integration with uh, this uh, data science tool. So basically, they the dialogue the uh, the company that uh, made the dialogue APL uh, released uh, the, the, a, a collection of notebooks uh, uh, on the, under open source. So yeah, with the notebooks, they also included the the, the kernel. So yeah, it's a it's a little tricky to install. Uh, but uh, yeah, if I can, I can, I guess, provide tech support or just uh, make a PR to the repo at, at a later time. But uh, basically, there's uh, to install this, I had to change uh, some directories that uh, it's uh, copying the files to because uh, it's assuming, uh, making some assumptions about uh, my Python installation. But uh, yeah, with a little uh, tweaking and uh, file system knowledge, uh, you can you can get it to work like I did. Another tool that Dialog is uh, making available is uh, this uh, Pi Ample. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a nice nice little pun. And uh, yeah, it's a APL to Python interface. Uh, this one is uh, easier to install because uh, I just uh, need to clone it somewhere and uh, uh, refer to. Uh, this uh, uh, one of the one of the files. Uh, so uh, it didn't. It's a. It, it it's not. There's no copying of the files uh, when I'm installing this. So when I put it together, uh, uh, yeah, I have uh, this little notebook here. So yeah, first uh, I'm clearing everything with uh, this uh, plot clear command, and. Yeah, this uh, so this uh, quad is basically a a prefix. It's basically a little uh, library. So in Python, you you can just say like import or import uh, this quad here, and uh, yeah, that's uh, basically what uh, uh, APL uses to uh, refer to the more uh, generic uh, functions like. Uh, uh, that doesn't have much, much to do with the, the math and the computations. So yeah, I'm creating the workspace. So it's a, I'm on, working on a clean slate here. And uh, yeah, I'm, and uh, this is a uh, one-liner uh, loads the, the Python interface for me. So this pineapple. And uh, yeah, and uh, I'm, it actually creates a object uh, called Pi. So uh, there's a there's a little extra step here where I have to uh, create a new instance of this uh, Python interpreter object, and uh, yeah, uh, uh, name it to Pi. Now I can it's ex 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 execute arbitrary Python expressions uh, inside uh, a this uh, string. So I can say I can import pandas right here. And uh, what am I going to do with pandas? I'm, uh, I'm going to read the data, of course. And uh, I, the data I decided to go with was uh, one of Ben's past projects, uh, which is uh, what he did in the undergraduate big data challenge uh, two years ago. So uh, there's a, it's a maybe, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it's basically Ben was uh, doing a little analysis on emotions uh, from social media. So <clears throat> yeah, I'm just uh, grabbing the data he was uh, using. It's a uh, pickled. I uh, I hope uh, yeah, I'm not uh, that familiar with pickles, but I think it's just a cache the Python expression. So yeah, I can look in the emo <laughs> folder, and uh, yeah, there's all these uh, social media with uh, with uh, emotional data. So uh, I just uh, went with the first one, emo4chan. And uh, 
I'm going to load it not into Python or Pandas. Well, I am kind of. But uh, after loading it, uh, I'm immediately saving it to CSV. So I can uh, inspect it from APL. So I'm just going to run this right now. And uh, yeah, and, uh, there, and I'm making, and when I'm uh, assigning in here particularly, I'm reading the CSV that I just uh, saved to. And uh, I, I, I can, I assign it to, to, to the name E4chan underscore. And uh, a little uh, efficiency hack, I would say, is to, is to uh, evaluate it uh, right after assigning it. Uh, in this example, I'm, after assigning it, I'm immediately looking at its shape. So that's uh, so I'm uh, saving a little space here. And uh, yeah, this is a huge uh, CSV. And uh, okay, and uh, before processing, there's a there's a little pre-processing here. Okay, uh, basically the the CSV assumes that it's string data. So I have to uh, uh, transform it to uh, uh, APL numbers uh, using this uh, little uh, execute uh, uh, function. But uh, yeah, uh, th there's not much to worry about it anymore. Now, uh, now I'm interested in the, the heading. So what I can do is, uh, is uh, since I already know the number of columns here, uh, 13 columns, I can I can do a little con concatenation and a special version of it that uh, 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 concatenates it uh, in a different way. So let's say if I just uh, concatenate without uh, this a special uh, uh, axis here, it's basically an option uh, in this implementation. So I I can see that uh, uh, it's a uh, I want to I want to uh, mesh the label with numbers so I can index into them easily, but uh, it's not happening here. But uh, if I do it this way, uh, if I pass it with an axis point one, uh, I can I can get a nice alignment. So yeah, I don't want every I don't want to display every column uh, for two reasons. Uh, the text column number seven is not safe for work. <laughs> it's uh, from Fortune, and uh, yeah, I, believe me, I've uh, looked and uh, <laughs> I'll I'll spare you the trouble. And another reason I don't want to look at uh, every every column is that uh, the it's, it's again on column seven the text. Uh, the text are kind of long, so it's uh, going to interfere with. Uh, the, this, the display, so it's gonna go like all the way over, all over, and it's gonna wrap around, which is uh, pretty ugly to look at. But uh, yeah, if you want to take a look at, take a look at it yourself, uh, uh, the the data, the data is out here, and uh, I can share it after the presentation. Okay, so uh, now that uh, uh, I'm, I have the, I have the headings. Uh, I, I don't need that anymore. So that's uh, why you see uh, me doing a one drop, which uh, basically hmm, it gets rid of the heading and it leaves me only with numbers. And uh, only until then, uh, I, can, I can use this uh, 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 number two to string to number conversion. So if I, if I do it without, if I don't do the one drop, and uh, so in here I'm just uh, selecting every every column, uh, but not number seven. So actually, let me do it on the side here. Uh, how, how much time do we have left, Ben? Uh, you have twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Okay. So. What so. 15, okay. Okay, fifteen. So yeah, I'll, I'll uh, just uh, do do this on the side there for now. So if I do IOTAS 13, so it gives me 13 numbers. 
But uh, if I do this uh, little without uh, the function, without uh, I say, let's say free. So I can remove the free, or I can say without free four, and free four is gone. So I don't want number seven. So I'm removing number seven here. And uh, I can, so uh, I'm basically passing all these uh, columns into, into the index. Uh, I'm indexing into all these columns inside this uh, E4CH variable. And uh, this, uh, this index notation actually uh, inspired a, a NumPy uh, index notation and uh, from MATLAB as well. Because uh, yeah, that, that log is uh, decades before uh, Python and uh, those languages. Okay, now finally, I can look at the data. Oh wait, I need to do one drop first. Okay, uh, drop. Okay, oh uh, yeah, these are some nice numbers uh, below here, and uh, I can I can see the headings as well. So yeah, I mean, okay, let's uh, look at it in a more visual way. So that's uh, what I have below here. So I want to look at uh, the data in one column. So there's a lot to choose from, a lot of emotions. So I am I want to go with, uh, yeah, I mean, we can look at a couple of them. Uh, let's uh, look at happy. <laughs> yeah, I was uh, looking at sad, but uh, I think uh, we can look at all of them eventually. And uh, I can I can do so with this uh, 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 open close uh, in close square bracket plot, which is uh, another utility function uh, APL provides or dialog APL provides. So I can pass it uh, a an array, and uh, uh, as an option, I can I, I can give it the type of uh, plot I want to generate. So if I do nothing, if I tell it to just, uh, okay, plot this, it's going to give me this, uh, it's, it's going to do exactly that. Uh, it's, go it's going to give me a line plot. So yeah, there, so it's a, pr a pretty giant uh, vector. It's like uh, over 10,000 entries. And uh, yeah, and the numbers, uh, these, these emotions are uh, between zero and one. And, uh, and the API just uh, handled it instantly. Yeah, it didn't uh, <laughs> complain at all. But uh, let me uh, display it in a more appealing form. So I can say, okay, give me a histogram of uh, the emotions. And uh, yeah, it's uh, fine with that too. So I can I can see that uh, the, the happy, there, there's not a lot of happy ones. They are all mostly that between zero and uh, uh, 0 0.1. So if they are happy, they are not that happy. And uh, let's say, hmm, let me see if I can look at it this way. Never mind. So I can look at, uh, hmm, yeah, angry. Actually, no, it's sad. Yeah. So there's uh, happy people, and uh, let's see if uh, how the how the sad people are behaving. Okay. So yeah. Mostly not so sad, but uh, when they are uh, uh, very sad, I guess they are at one. Uh, then there's uh, about uh, over a thousand of them. So that's a look. compare that with uh, what happens when people are happy. But yeah, there's a, <laughs> so when people are happy, they are a lot less happy compared to people who are sad. Okay, now. Uh, and let me let me show you a, a more generic, uh, uh, some more generic more generic generic things you can do with plot. So yeah, I can I can pass it, I can generate basically sine cosines uh, with this uh, little expression. So I'll just display y one and y two here. So, so these are these are just the uh, numbers uh, on the on the sine wave, and. Uh, I can I can plot it this way too. I can pass passing my y's, two y's, and then my x. So yeah, it gives me two two lines on the plot. So that gives me an idea 
what is, I can I can do the same here. So I can do uh, uh, nine twelve and the uh, parentheses, and uh, I, I can get to the shape as well. So I'll say generate uh, this many indices, and let's see what happens. Hmm. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I think I need to, yeah, do one last. Okay, let me just quickly check the check the shape here. Okay, yes, I need to do one last then. That. Hmm. Okay, never mind. <laughs> All right. Anyways, uh, yeah, there, there's a uh, this a uh, uh, rudimentary plot command. And uh, okay, right. Then I'm saving, but uh, there are other, there are more uh, extensible ways to plot uh, data here as well. And uh, there's uh, this uh, short plot uh, library, I, I would say. So yeah, I'm just going to initialize it. It's a, uh, it ships with a dialog APL when you download it. So I'm going to initialize it and I'm going to set the formats. So yeah, the, it's a it's a this uh this a sharp plot uh, tool. It's implemented in multiple languages. So uh, it's a there's a okay there's a C sharp uh, .net APL. Yeah, and uh, it, it, so the, here are some example codes. This is uh, in C sharp, I assume, and this is in VB and uh, APL. So yeah, they, they are mostly uh, the same. You just need to uh, assign variables. So yeah, it's a pretty object-oriented uh, uh, interface. So if I, if I customize it to a, this a certain style, so I can set you know, uh, the, the stuff on the x, y axis. I can set the font. I can set the caption. I can set the label and uh, all those things. Yeah, colors, of course. And uh, once I do that, uh, I can okay, a, a little more configuration, set the ranges. And then finally, I can, I can draw it. And uh, the data we were using is uh, from uh, the, the sine and cosine wave. But uh, I want I want to plot I want to draw the the data I was looking at the angry and the, no the happy and sad data. Oh, actually, yeah, it uh, the plot is created, but uh, since we are in Jupiter, it's not uh, displayed. But uh, don't worry, we can display the the plot as HTML. And uh, there we go. Okay, so let's uh, have uh, some fun with it. So where's my data? It's a uh, fortune data. So I'll comment this out. And uh, for oh, e fortune, and uh, I'll plot on colon nine. Okay, that's expected. Hmm. So yeah, I can make a new instance of a short plot. So I'll say short plot underscore, and, uh, and let's see if uh, how it handles that. Okay, the domain error. I'm going to do something destructive here. I'm going to uh, enlist it, which basically forces the data to be a list. Okay, <laughs> and that's why you don't like code. Hmm. Okay. So I think. Uh, okay. I can I can look at the shape of data. And let's see. Okay, it's of shape two. So that gives me an idea. So I can say, uh, e underscore four chain at uh, colon nine. And I'm going to put it in parentheses. I'm going to get uh, the, the number 
Yes, I'm going to pick the first uh, shape of uh, E4 chain, which gives me the, the number of rows. And I'm going to generate an index of it. And let's see what the shape of that is. Oh, <laughs> yeah, three C things. Okay, it's two as well. So <laughs> the, the shape matches. I guess I, I'll check the shape of each of them too. Oh, okay. Let me see. Oh, it's, a, it's nested. Okay, let me see how data was defined. Hmm. Okay, I see now. Oh, I need to specify it this way. Okay. Let's uh, see. I can I can construct that too. So I'll keep uh, this handy. And uh, all right. So I'll make a variable here. Uh, I can say uh, I'll plot the other column as well. And twelve, I think. So let's see if the shape. Okay, that's uh. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Let me check the shape first. Oh, now it's a giant. Hmm. Let's see, x1, x2. Why? Okay, data. Oh, okay. I think I need to use this, this, this snippet as well. So I'll say, hmm. Uh, nine. Okay, I guess we can stick with uh, one with one data type. I mean one colon. Oh, I know why. Because I'm displaying this. So let me just undo everything. Okay. Oh, I don't want to show this. I'll assign it to nothing. Okay. Now this is a uh... hmm row. Each. I'll look at the shape of each each now. Okay, this is looking promising. So let's see if I can plot this. Uh, SP dot draw line graph for now. Actually, let me just copy it. It's angry at me. It's not angry. Okay. Oh, it's a, uh, oh, I need to start a new one. It's uh, overlapping. Don't worry, we did this before. So let me make a new, new sharp plot. Okay. And uh, I'll use this underscore sharp plot here. Oh. <laughs> okay, that's pretty funny. Yeah, so yeah, let's uh, try a histogram. So I'll say, I think uh, it's uh, in one of their, uh, I just said uh, control F for histo. Yes, there are histograms. So how do I draw this? Draw histogram, got it. Actually, let me just uh, copy this method. Uh, draw histogram. Hmm, F sharp plot. Well, this is lagging. Okay, let's uh, do it slowly now. So not a, don't draw graph, give me a histogram. Oh, <laughs> thanks man. Yeah, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I can't draw, draw. Lane error. Okay. All right, I think uh, we can do a compromise here in, in for the interest of time. And uh, I, can, I can draw a segment of it. I'll say 15 take, I'll draw 15 of them. And uh, yeah, Jupiter is uh, uh, struggling right now. I said 15 take. Okay, hmm, 15 take each. Or, oh, I think I should, uh, hmm, I'll assign it to 
this thing and uh, do a 15 take. Maybe maybe that will uh, give, give me less uh, data. Oh, OK. OK, here's uh, the most robust way to do this. Hmm. So let me okay, we'll look at the shape of uh, this thing. I'll say shape and uh, 15 take. And uh, see what uh, this underscore thing actually is. And uh, let me comment uh, this out. OK, it's actually 15. Oh, I know why. Because uh, the shape of this is only two. So I need to do a 15 take inside. And uh, hopefully, there's a last data. And I need to look at the shape of each of them. OK, so I can safely draw this uh, underscore thing, length error. Hmm. OK. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. You have it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Mm, Fifteen take each. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. How much time do we have left, Ben? Uh, negative two minutes. Okay. Wait. It worked. Okay. Yes. Okay. Finally, for my final trick. <laughs> yeah. Here's a uh, that's a, a sparse display of uh, the emotions, but uh, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to uh, give myself an out and say, yeah, this is how you do APL uh, with data science uh, in practice. So yeah, there's uh, some trial and error, but uh, you, you can see me just uh, interactively debugging my, my program just by looking at looking into the shape. And uh, the, yeah, that's uh, working based off of, of a demo. So yeah, uh, I'll hand it back to Ben and uh, mute myself. Uh, yeah. Oh, actually, let me uh, post some links, helpful links for uh, the, the, the stuff uh, I was uh, just uh, demoing. OK. Then that's uh, all, the, all the resources I'm, I'm using. And uh, actually, sharp plot as well. Yeah. Oh, OK. OK, sounds good.